Welcome to episode 3 of the Serene Chaos Podcast. friends and listeners I would like to continue episode 3 with pretty much how my process is artistically when it comes to doing the actual production of the comic and what I first do is that I after I write the script of course I write the script depending on what project I'm doing as I had stated in the previous podcast for example with Warlord I have most of the dialogue written out and structured out the three main acts of the story. So I flesh out those scenes by doing thumbnails first. I usually do it on a notebook, but I also bought this paper that is exclusively for making thumbnails. It has like four rectangles where you can do like the page breakdown the scene breakdowns of what you're going to do visually and on the side it has a couple of lines for you to write things on as well like I found this to be extremely useful especially in the remake of the uh, epilogue of the prologue rather of the comic the Fred Peterson the Mighty Warlord that I'm doing and what I do is that I break down those scenes. I try to adjust the transitions as smoothly as possible from panel to panel and from page to page. And I get my visual cues on what to do and what not to do in the sense of the dialogue. Sometimes as I'm doing the thumbnailing, I'll either cut dialogue out if I deem it as it's prolonging the scene a little too much or maybe it's a little redundant or I want to let the art speak for itself a little bit more and also on the contrary if I see that a scene necessitates to be a little bit longer to explain something I'm going to add like maybe a line or two of dialogue and maybe to yes make that transition smoother from scene to scene so basically I just lay out the entire comic first or usually what I do if I'm a little hard pressed of time because I'm working on other projects or something I'll at least try to do five thumbnails of the five pages that I'll be eventually working on And once I get the thumbnails down, once I know, have a good idea of where to put the dialogue and how to execute it, then I'll do the layouts of the pages itself. Like, usually I'll just take one day and I'll lay out, like, five pages of the comic. And when I say layout, I mean that I'll just, like, do the illustrations very lightly just to like get a sense of where everything is going to be on place on the actual page so on the actual page I'll just draw very lightly on it get a sense of what's going on see if it translates well from the thumbnails if not sometimes I'll go back and redo the thumbnail and redo the entire scene again and again it's all about kind of having that vision of where you're going and setting that focus on what to do as well and again that's just the way I like to do it there are many ways that other artists do it there are artists that don't even like doing thumbnails or layouts at all because 
they feel that it might take away energy and time from the actual drawing itself so many artists will just dive head first right into the page and do it or many will just do a very rough layout and just do the page from the layout and don't do thumbnails because they think that the thumbnails will probably muddle the mind of what you want to do or maybe the thumbnail will distract you because it doesn't look as good as how the page could be again many artists have many ways of doing it and you do whatever is more comfortable to you as an artist and whatever allows you to express yourself well enough to be able to convey whatever message you want to portray in those pages uh, me personally i like to do that step of thumbnailing from the script then do the rough layouts and after i do the rough layouts i do like about five pages as i said in one day and and lightly drawn layouts i will probably spend anywhere between two to four hours doing the rough layouts and then afterwards i'll do i'll work one page at a time one page a day adding all the details penciling everything in and then of course doing the inking a lot of times i'll ink it traditionally if i have a little bit extra time on my hand or i want one scene in particular to have more of a cleaner more crisper look i'll just scan in the page and ink it digitally instead because inking digitally you, you get the advantage that you'll get a little bit cleaner that line art and it'll pop out a little bit more than when you do it traditionally at least in my case anyway like people can tell the difference between when i ink it traditionally and i ink it digitally because they always say that the line art looks so much cleaner and crisper when i ink it digitally compared to inking it traditionally and of course after i finish doing a page as i said i'll scan it in and depending on what the scene called for if i had already inked it or i'll just do it digitally of course i'll color over it using photoshop after i lay down the flats i do the colors and then i render it afterwards i letter it in photoshop as well and that's pretty much it for the visual presentation of the comic and one of the advantages i find of doing thumbnails and roughs to start doing that is that when you actually as well think about printing it as a physical copy you have the advantage of knowing the page count and where the reader is going to turn the page so you can have like a suspenseful page building up on your right hand and just pretty much have the person just not wait to be able to turn the page to know what's going to happen so you can create a lot of suspense keeping in mind the positioning of the page as well when you have the physical copy of the book because many people will read the webcomic and might not necessarily buy the physical copy and vice versa. People might find the physical copy but not really read the webcomic. So it's kind of good to like keep that in mind as well. That you have that page count for the physical book if you want to do it. You can know how to more or less build tension and suspense by having a something suspenseful and maybe a bit of a cliffhanger on the right side of the page the right side of the book rather and you know just kind of have that person have that sensation of oh i can't wait to turn the page so when it comes to the visual production that's pretty much it um i might make a video most likely i will make a video doing a process of how I do an entire page. Um, on YouTube, I already uploaded a speed inking video, which has been pretty well received. I like to thank all the people who has viewed it. And I'd also like to thank the people that have been patient and waiting for this third episode. It took a little over a year for me to do another podcast because there was a lot of 
problems with the computers that I had and just a lot of things happened and I don't want to bring some of that negativity over if anything I want to keep the podcast and all the content that I do whether it be on the podcast or the YouTube channel very positive and again I'd like to thank everyone that has tuned in to listen on the podcast I'm going to keep doing the podcast as well. I'm not going to do it every week like I had tried to do uh, before. But I am going to try to do it at the very least once a month. And I'm also going to have creator interviews with other indie creators as well as peers that I have gotten to know through the years doing all this crazy stuff known as comic book creating and web comicking. So once again, thank you. I am eternally grateful for your attention and I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's the shortest one so far and I think it's good to like keep those episodes maybe somewhere in between 10 to 25 minutes, give or take. When it's an interview, it'll probably be a little bit longer than that because it would be nice to have an in-depth conversation with other creators just to pick apart their creative minds well anyway that will be all for this episode thank you for tuning in and stay creative my friends